I got a pee already. Gus, go with the theme song. No, I don't do that. Just <laughs> turn off the ringer. Pretty it's good. a fucking button. Push it. You don't have to invent a time machine and go back and kill Alexander <laughs> Graham Bell. Just fucking turn off the goddamn phone. That is fucking awesome. Shut up, Gavin. <laughs> Tupperware. He's having sloppy pussy. Hey, it's a podcast. Hey. So it is. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm okay, man. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. You look, uh, you look terrible. Thanks, man. Uh, Bernie did this cool thing to me. Well, the night before at last, I stayed up till like four in the morning helping Griffin do something for her career. Sex stuff? Yeah. Uh, no, dude, I wish. Oh. And, uh, and and we're married. We don't. There's no sex oh, okay. stuff. It was just for career, you said. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> uh, and then uh, last night at about, I was working on uh, some Bioshock videos, and then at about 11 o'clock, Bernie messaged me and said, hey, um, can you... Uh, can you proof a video for me in about 45 minutes? And I was like, oh, shit, I was about to go to bed. And I was like, yeah, yeah no problem. The dude's at work. He's busting his ass. Yeah, I'll, st- I'll stay up and proof it. And then at about, like, I don't know, 11.45, he goes, it'll be like another half hour. And I'm like, okay. And then at like 12.45, he goes, another 15 minutes. And I go, okay. You see, you're in the slippery slope. And then at like 1.45, he just logged off. And so I just went to bed. So I stayed up till two last night, waiting to prove a video that never showed up. I, I wish he was here to defend himself, but for the third week in a row, he, he <laughs> he's, he's bailed on us. I think ever since he had that conversation about uh, late night television, he's been afraid <laughs> to show his face here on uh, the podcast again. That might be it. I don't know. We we ran him off. Oh, uh, for Shane. I what heard that was a, an impassioned conversation. Yeah, it, it, it definitely was. How about, what about you, Joel? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, nothing going on. At really? All. That, that's like a first for you, isn't it? It is a first for me. I would like to get the Guitar Hero version of that intro, though. <laughs> <laughs> if we could figure that one out, that would be pretty awesome. I wonder what he would call that song. What's it called? Um, let me look. I, I rename them all when I get them, so I know what I'm doing. He didn't call it anything. He called it RT Intro Edit. It's oh, okay. by Josh Clark, who is Holy Sticks 04. <laughs> S-T-I-X. And oh, says, of course. It sounds like you guys were uh, a little less than impressed with the last night's Lost. Is that right? Dude, do we want to get into that? <laughs> well, uh, I'm here we mention it. More. It was uh, a. <laughs> it, it was slow. I'm. Uh, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of exposition going on right now. I'll say this: I, I don't want to spend another 20 minutes talking about Lost in the podcast, especially because there wasn't 20 minutes worth of stuff to talk about in last night's episode. Mm-hmm. But hey, we have what 15 episodes to go in the whole series and a lot of unanswered questions to tie up right i figure well mm-hmm. so why not address something in the episode <laughs> that was the most boring rambling not a goddamn thing happened episode i've seen in at least probably two seasons how many episodes do you think have that you've seen of lost it just had no payoff whatsoever it was just well when shit, i was watching I it initially you know when i watched the first the first time through when the first season was airing I, I kind of felt like that. I felt like a lot of stuff was just slow and nothing was resolving, nothing was happening. And I was really on the fence about the show the whole first season. Uh, but like looking back now and watching it, I love it. Really? You know, I I, it, I think it's it's fantastic. It's one of the better seasons. So I wonder if I'm just too close to it now, like I was to the first season when that was airing. Let me ask you a question. What was the best thing to come out of last night's episode to you? I think the best thing in last night's episode was when Jack swallows the pill and the dude tries to get him to, like the dude goes from like, being very cool and collected to like all of a sudden panicking and trying yeah, to be, trying to beat it out of him. That was kind of cool. Were you excited to see Claire return? Um, it was interesting to see Claire return. I was under the impression we wouldn't see her again on the island. No, I kind of always assumed we would. You figure that like, I mean, you get the impression that she's an agent of the bad guy, right? Right, the Man in Black, and that he's going to be amassing some sort of army for a final showdown. So then was. Jack's dad also yeah. working for the bad guy, yeah. but they were or, in, but, or, he, or he was the bad guy. But they were in Jacob's cabin. See, yeah, but Jacob's cabin. They were in Jacob's cabin, and when they went and found them, they saw that that the what's that the, like the silt or the yeah. dust or whatever that they circled the cabin with had been broken, mm. and that's what that's how they were able to be. And is that why Locke heard the whisper of "Help me"? Yeah. And also, I think that I think Jack's dad it was actually the man in black. At least that's always the impression I got because he can they can essentially inhabit any dead people, right? Hmm. Which is why they were scared that Saeed had been turned mm-hmm. essentially in the episode. And I guess maybe he has. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, that's at least why I always understood that they were in the cabin. 
Is it, and that's why they burned the cabin down at some point. When when we were watching last night, my wife had forgotten that Claire was Jack's half sister. Oh, really? Like that was like a, she was like, who's you know who's your who's his sister? Who is that? Hmm. I was like, it's Claire. So we'll see. I think yeah. I think they're, they're I think they're starting to bring <laughs> things back together by re, like reminding people of things like that. I, I hope they go somewhere with the flash, like the sideways flashes. Because they're not doing anything for me. The sideways flashes? Oh, like the alternate, uh, yeah. alternate reality? I don't know what else to call present. them. They're not flash forward. They're not flash backwards. But they're like flash, the you, prime flash left. As you guys right. talk about this, I could only think that if only there was a way to combine Fallout and Lost into one thing, then we could really have a conversation. I have no <laughs> idea what the fuck is going on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm afraid sometimes when I'm talking about Lost that it sounds like I'm talking about a soap opera. Like, oh, Claire's really his long-lost half-sister. It sounds like and, that. It and, is, and, I got news for buddy. It is a soap opera. <laughs> and, and so-and-so's got amnesia, but they're in a coma. <laughs> 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 and they're pregnant. <laughs> and Locke's not really dead. <laughs> okay, I'm watching Guiding Light, aren't I? Yeah, just, pretty much. I, I, I've, okay. been, I've been lying to myself for the past six years. It's Guiding Light with special effects and guns. <laughs> That's all it is. I don't know how people feel. I'm going to change the subject. I don't know how people feel about the iPad um, very much. Is like going back and forth. I know that Gus had a strong feeling about the iPod when it came out, and I think you were right on. But apparently Disney had its conference call last night, and if you got like a nickel for every time that Disney brought up the term iPad, you'd be a millionaire. Well, they really? Call, that, that's synergy, Joel. That's, 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 the, that's the whole Pixar-Apple connection. It's yeah. concerning how much they're in love with the iPad and how much they think that it's going to be the thing and how much they're writing their content to be applied to this thing. When the iPod first came out, I remember I, – I may have even talked about this on, on, the, on the podcast. You know, Everyone on Slashdot was talking about what a piece of shit it was and how it was overpriced. And you know, I had some comments in there talking about how I, you know, all these people were missing the point. It was fantastic. You know, it's going to be a huge piece of technology. It's going to change everything. I don't feel that way about the iPad, but I'm reserving judgment until I get my hands on one. It seems like uh, every time a little piece of technology comes out, it's like, wait till you see the ESPN application for this. It's going to be great. And every single one of them, like, fails just about. But mm-hmm. again, last night Disney was touting, wait till you see this ESPN app that you can have for the iPad. It's going to be great. That's also synergy. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say too much bad about it until I actually use one and see what it's capable of. Obviously, if they can do for video what they did for audio through a device, it will be, you know, huge. The question is, you know, can they make that happen? I'm buying one on day one. Are so you? you guys are more than welcome to use mine. Yeah, because uh, I would. This was 2010 was going to be the year that I bought an e-reader anyway, and it's it's like a hundred bucks more expensive than a Kindle. And you have a Kindle, right? I don't have a Kindle yet, but I was because there's a there's a bunch. There's like five new e-readers that are going to hit the market this year that are all pretty cool. And so I was going to get one of those. And uh, I figured, fuck it, I'll just lay down another hundred bucks and buy an iPad. And then I'm going to give it to Griffin because she does a lot of uh, she does design work, you know, like right. designing sets and stuff for plays. Right. And she always has to go to meetings and borrow my laptop. And she's always having to sketch on pieces of paper to show people stuff. And this, you know, it has this that application brushes for her. Do you so know, she can just sketch right on the are, screen. And are, it sounds people. perfect. I, yeah. do, do you know a single person that has a Kindle that doesn't love it? No. Uh, well, I only know Bernie is the only person I know that has a Kindle, but he loves his. Yeah, every person that I know that has a Kindle loves it. Are you going to get the Wi-Fi or the 3G one? Uh, I'm going to get the Wi-Fi one because mm-hmm. I don't think Griffin uh, – I, I don't intend to pay. For the 3G, <laughs> and I don't think it would get used anyway. And uh, honestly, where do we go that we don't we can't connect to Wi-Fi in Austin anyway? It's true for the most part. And, but when I had my when I had my iPod Touch, there were places I wish. I and had it. don't you get free AT and T Wi-Fi? Yeah, you can connect to AT and T well, Wi-Fi hotspots for. So free. even if we're like in the airport or whatever, we'll yeah. be fine. Uh, not in the Austin airport or most airports. Wait, 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 yeah, they don't they don't like that. They don't <laughs> version of the iPad that has capabilities of doing Wi-Fi and 3G. Yeah. Oh yeah, they do. Oh they, okay, they right. do. Yeah, it's an extra hundred dollars. Yeah, the 3G version also has Wi-Fi. I see. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But I just I don't I don't think I would use the 3G very often. And the the few times that I would need it, I could probably just use my iPhone, mm-hmm. which already has 3G. So I don't see I don't see a reason to pay an extra twenty dollars a month. Is, does the iPad have Bluetooth? Do you know? Like in, in no eventually, idea. when you can tether your iPhone, you know, thanks AT and T, when you can eventually tether your iPhone, will you be able to tether it to your iPad? I. I I mean, that would make sense, right? Why wouldn't you be able to? Because at and is a piece of shit, and even though they promised you'd be able to do that last summer, you still can't do it. That's true. We'll see, huh? Uh, I'm trying to see. If, I, don't, I don't know that it has Bluetooth necessarily. I don't know what you would use Bluetooth on it for. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. No, it does have Bluetooth. 2.1 and EDR. I'm pretty excited about it, though. I don't... If it, if it wasn't for my wife, I don't think I would buy one, just because I don't... 
I don't think I would use it enough, but I'm excited to see how much she uses it, and then I can just borrow it and you know see how cool it is. Sure. Because yeah. if it's as cool as they as they say it's going to be, and I've learned to trust Apple over the years, <laughs> yeah, you know, for the most part. So I don't know. There's a, there's a couple of <laughs> missteps. There's, a, there's in there. a few missteps. What I mean, about the the TV thing? Apple TV. I don't know if I'd consider it. Yeah, I kind of missed that. The, I don't know. Well, would what you, do you think, us? Apple TV is stupid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, 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 should, I should explain before I just write stuff off like that. Um, they're, they're doing stuff to fix it. I felt like Apple TV got off on the wrong foot because they were, the initial models, when it first came out, you couldn't do HD. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, you know, that was, I didn't understand that. I remember you and I went, uh, as soon as they got them in the Apple store, you and I went up to check them out, and it looked like shit. Yeah, it, it's, it's terrible. And they've done a lot of stuff, you know, they fixed that, and the new software works a lot better. They just need to integrate the PC experience more so yeah. that you can use it as a standalone, as opposed to, like, needing to get your media off of a computer or if an they, iPod or something. If they pipe Hulu into That's the Apple exactly TV, That's exactly what I was thinking. I'll buy one that day. Yeah, if they could pipe it, you know... I'll buy two. Their, or if they could use... You know, what are those programs? Like Boxy, I think, does yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. there's a bunch of those. But, but uh, this iPad looks like it, you can... I guess they've got a case for it and a keyboard you can plug into it and all kinds of shit. When's it coming out? Uh, March, I think. It, the Wi-Fi version comes out in March. I think the 3G version comes out in April. Yeah. So I'll be getting it in like three weeks, maybe? Yeah. So I'm curious to see how that processor of theirs works out. Oh yeah, they're a uh, the custom built A4 custom. processor. It's gonna be it's gonna be cool. I hope I hope it's not a dud. Well, I, for on, uh, for your sake, I hope it's not a dud. Either. I mean, even if it is kind of a dud, it'll the reason I'm buying it. I think it'll still get it'll be used appropriately mm-hmm. in my household, so it's gonna work regardless. But my, my wife hates it. Does she really? She will not. Every time she sees her, she sees someone talking about it, she will not talk about how stupid it is. That's and a, I always keep saying, just calm down. She has an iPhone. I, I'm like, your, your iPhone's fine? That seems she, her, to be... Her, her big deal is, she like, let's say you have an iPad, right? Yeah. She says, how, she wants to be able to prop it up and type on it. She you, doesn't understand why you, can do you would, why you would look down and type or why you would hold it up and type. But you can do that. They sell a docking bay for it. Yeah, but just the device itself should be able to do that. I, I, well, your iPhone doesn't... Yeah, but your iPhone fits like this in the palm of your hand. The iPad's a little too big for that. Yeah, but... I, mean, I, I, I can see her point on that. I guess, but most tablets are, are you know, same thing. Yeah. All e-readers are like that. You can't type. You can't prop up a Kindle. Yeah, but this is more than an e-reader. They're not touting it as an e-reader. I, and and I, tablets have, you know, a lot more like handwriting recognition stuff, which is dumb. I'm glad they don't have that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sold on it either, just because it's like you know the iPod, iPhone, something that can fit in your pocket and you can take with you, and it has all these full capabilities that works. Uh, I don't see people carrying around, dude. I, unless you know, if there's a way that you can have a device that fits in your pocket and then like it somehow projects a screen that's large, that's or, or it folds out like you, it's it an iPad out. that folds down to the size of an iPhone. <laughs> and you're like, like, hold for, on. For, for years, I heard the rumor about like how uh, Apple was coming up with this technology that it would basically project a keyboard like a light. It would project a light right. keyboard, and you would type on that, and that's how it would work. I, I've seen those keyboards before. Did it I, work? Th- those keyboards exist. They. It, they're they're kind of hard. Like, they're a little slower than you would expect because I would expect there's no it to tactile be, I would feedback. expect it to be pretty slow, actually. <laughs> so. Like, it's it's weird to type and not have, you know, the tactile feel, um, feedback from a keyboard. It's almost like they would have to, like, you know, have those fake sound clicks right. every time just to, like, process it correctly. I think that that thing will come in handy on trips, too. I mean, we travel a lot, and I think that will be a lot of fun on a plane. Yeah, the battery life is, is great. It's fantastic. To watch movies. And I don't always want to lug my laptop around, you know. That's how much does that thing weigh? It's like two pounds or something. Uh, One point five pounds. One point five pounds. That's perfect. Point yeah, six great. eight kilograms for I the rest of the I world. Can't, I can't uh, picture myself on a trip where I'm not going to take my laptop though. So it's like a thing where it's like, well, now I'm taking my laptop and this iPad. Thing. I would that that could replace my laptop in a second as long because as long as you can get on yeah, well, Safari and check your mail. Joel and I go on daddy trips and do work. So oh, I've we been need on our those. Laptops. I've been on those daddy trips. And that thing does what? I guess if you wanted to do editing on your laptop. There would be that or transfer files. I guess it, it, it's it's limited. It can't it can't do it can't it can't replace a laptop for. I want a, I want an eye editing station that's a portable editing station that also can have an FTP and <laughs> all the <laughs> functionality. That's what I want. So you want your laptop? Every day consumer. You got one yeah. MacBook Pro. You got a MacBook Pro. <laughs> yeah, I, I went with you when you bought it. Yay! <laughs> so Jeff, you're playing Bioshock Two right now. Yeah, I'm playing the hell out of it. What do you think about that? Uh, it's a lot like Bioshock One. Did you play Bioshock One? Yes. Did you like it? Uh, I did. Uh, eh. Then you would probably be. Eh, my about my too. only feeling about Bioshock was I remember it won the game of the year when it came out. Like, yes, for it the did. video. Is there any? Is there any connection between that show, the video game awards, and video games? 
have you guys like huh? found a single the VGAs? A single, uh, have you found a single connection between the VGAs and video games? Um, they show all. video game trailers. <laughs> I, I don't That's know. About it. I mean, they have fake exclusive me. trailers. <laughs> what I don't get is like all these games get like game of the year or whatever. Who awards that? Because there's like five games of the year. Like there's like five different games that'll come out and have like game of the year edition. Yeah. Well, I mean, all you have to do is get a magazine to call you game of the year, right? Like GameSpot calls yeah. you game of the year. You get to be game of the year, and you get to put it on your on your box art, I guess. I guess so. We, there, there needs to be a standard. I agree with that. I do. There needs I to be like a ratings board, like like, like a, a governing body. Yeah, right. Like ESRB. I guess that's what the v, VJs are trying to be. <laughs> Give me the I ESRB so. game, of the, game of the year. <laughs> there there was the no, least punching, fine, in no punching in this game. This is our game of the year. <laughs> I'm surprised they made a sequel to Bioshock. I really am. I felt like the original Bioshock wrapped up so neatly and was like a self-contained package. I don't, and I haven't played and, Bioshock and, 2. And I haven't had a chance to pick it up yet. It's, I hope it's not a spoiler if I say, you know, you're, you're right. They wrapped it up so good. It's like they had to go forward in time, right? Story makes sense. Does it? I think so. I think hmm. it, it, it makes, it's written in a way that makes it feel consistent and also, uh, I, don't, I don't know if necessary is the word, but like it doesn't feel like a stretch to me. I, I don't think that it's possible. If, if someone produces a video game and it makes X amount of dollars, it's not possible to not have a sequel. No, absolutely. Like, you know what I mean? The mm-hmm. day, Whether it's good or not, they're the, going to make it. The day that Bioshock got Game of the Year, you had to know. Hell, the day it sold a million copies, you had to know there'd be a sequel. Absolutely. Of course. And there's, I get news for you. There'll be a Bioshock 3, too. Mm-hmm. You know, Just like there's going to be... Well, Mass Effect 3 and Fallout 4. Unless, unless Bioshock 2 doesn't do well, but it probably... It probably will do well. It's do, it's gonna, it's doing well. I'm, I'm concerned sure. about... I'm, and I haven't really played the multiplayer either. You know, we, we worked on yeah. a commercial spot and, uh, we, for the game, and we, we, we used multiplayer to make that commercial. We spent like But that's not really several, playing the game. We spent several days within the multiplayer, and the entire time we spent looking at a fish. Yeah, we, so, were, we were looking yeah. at a fish. <laughs> well, that's the problem with the kind of work we do. Right? I know. Yeah, so I have no <laughs> we idea. We play video games, but we don't play them. The right, fish, right. by the way, is awesome. And we, I, uh, and we also come up with like our own names for levels that don't have anything to do with the actual <laughs> names it's like let's go let's go to let's go to blanche's apartment okay it's like what, what level is that i think it's mercury suites is what it's actually we, we, are, we are experts at coming up with our own time <laughs> even for the shorts we've got like four <laughs> titles for each short that make total sense <laughs> to all of us but when you go to the site it's not titled any of those titles <laughs> i uh i haven't i haven't had the opportunity to play the multiplayer yet but i hear it's really really good mm-hmm. everything i've read about it is that the multiplayer really shines but as far as single player, the only really di- the only real difference from Bioshock One is that the hacking is easier. Like they really dumb down the hacking, so you don't spend all day turning those little fucking tubes. Really, right. that's, which that's, is much appreciated. That's really weird to me. Like to me, this is so dumb. To me, that was like my favorite part of the oh, game. Oh, really? That got so old so quickly. <laughs> like remember the wet? There was a there was a little uh, game uh, with the pipes called Wet Works that was like from the eighties or something, or from the nine early nineties. That they just incorporated into that game. Oh, really? I don't you know remember what I'm that. talking about? No, I don't remember no, that. Really? No. You might have made that game up. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm telling you, dude, I played that thing. I'm sure, I'm sure in your head you played it. <laughs> oh, my God. Sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. Somebody packed me up. But, uh, but no, it's just like, it's like a, it kind of reminds me of Mass Effect 2 in that, like, they basically took Ma- Bioshock 1 and streamlined it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, the game feels like it plays faster. I don't feel like I'm spending as much time running around searching for shit like I did in Bioshock 1. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't, it's not as, it's a lot more linear than Bioshock 1 was. Like, in Bioshock 1, you could pretty much explore the entire map at any point. And uh, that's not, definitely not the case in Bioshock 2. I, I have to disagree with you. I don't think you can explore the entire map at any given point necessarily. Well, you could uh, you could go back and around and stuff. You didn't have to go like necessarily true. in the right yeah, order. Yeah, like they had a big open map, and it was like, you're at yeah. A. You have to go unlock X before you can get to B. Bioshock 2, it's once you clear a level, you're done. You can't go back. Oh, really? It's over, yeah. And so it's like super linear. And I didn't. I don't get the feeling like in the level design. So far, I'm only like three or four levels in. Like, I would get to a world, like a level in Bioshock, and uh, I'd be like, where the fuck do I go again? There's, like, 12 doors to go through, and I'd always feel like I was missing stuff. I don't feel like that at all in Bioshock. I liked the map in Bioshock 1, the way, like, when you pulled it up, the the icons they used to denote the different things. Like I Still ne- have that. Yeah, yeah I, th- I thought that was done well. Like, I never had to look at the key to figure it out. Like, oh, there's a clown face here. That means the Circus of Values is there. <laughs> yeah. You know, stuff like that. But I will uh, say, if Bioshock 1 didn't blow you away, I don't think Bioshock 2 will. It's just a, a slightly faster well, like 
like, it's more streamlined version of the first one. Now to jump to the other side and play the other side of the coin. I hear that the story picks up and really gets good at the very end, though. I, yeah, that's what I've, I've read, too. I, I, I don't know what that would be, but I so far, I'm really enjoying the story. They have, um, you know, I'm collecting audio logs mm-hmm. to do videos for Achievement Hunter, and there's like 124 or so in there. Mm-hmm. And the audio logs, I didn't pay any attention to them in the first one. I collected them and didn't listen to them. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of, like, little side stories going on in Bioshock 2 that are all pretty interesting. Like, I actually look forward to listening to the audio logs. Yeah, the first time I played through Bioshock, I didn't pay attention to audio logs either, but I just replayed through it, you know, last month to get ready for Bioshock 2, and I, pl- I paid attention to all the audio logs this time around and uh, yeah it's the same thing there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on that you can miss if you're not paying God, attention it's so to funny it's like i had the exact same experience you know where it's just like mm-hmm. going through just not just didn't listen to them you know it's so that's so weird that's that's the same thing as like essentially like with mass effect 2 and most of the bioware uh action rpg games i would always just like to get through the te- get through the word you know the text trees as quickly as i can to get back to fighting and mass effect 2 i've watched Every scene, and I've I've enjoyed every conversation. Yeah, I've already finished Mass Effect two twice. Once as a Paragon, once as a Renegade, and I'm starting my third and fourth playthroughs right now. How, how's the ending? Um, it's good. <laughs> uh, it's you know it's it's dark. You know when Mass Effect one came out, they said they wanted you know to make a trilogy and have three games. So you know like Empire Strikes Back, the middle's always going to be kind of dark. So the game ends kind of on an up note, but kind of on a bigger down note, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the next one. I, w- I will say I'm excited to get through Bioshock so I can get back to playing Mass Effect for fun. And then once you finish Mass Effect, general. you can get back to Fallout. Yeah, and then I can get back to Fallout, right? God. You're never digging yourself out of this hole. No, and it's it's impossible. And they just keep announcing games, and they keep piling it on. Like, they just announced a new Ghost Recon is coming out this mm-hmm. year, and fucking Assassin's Creed 3 is coming out next spring, and a new ma- a new Mass Effect in some way next spring. New Medal of Honor this summer. New Medal of Honor this summer. That um, We knew about that, but... Uh, yeah, but they just cemented it up that it was yeah, coming yeah, out yeah. this year. Lego Star Wars comes out this year, Lego mm-hmm. Star Wars 3. God, it's just like every day there's a new game announcement. Whatever too happened, much. I, whatever happened to that Ubisoft game? I'm still alive. Is that what it was called? Uh, I'm alive. I'm whatever. alive. Yeah. Yeah. That got pushed to the next year. I think. Oh, did it? That's too bad. I yeah. saw the trailer for that last year. I thought it was. I thought it was coming we, out last year. Yeah, we saw the trailer at E3 last year, right? Huh. I think. And uh, yeah, there's just like and hell in the next couple of weeks we still have Splinter Cell coming up pretty soon. Oh yeah, that's Red Dead Redemption is April? coming out really yeah, soon. Yeah. Man, Battlefield Battlefield Bad Company Two is on its way out. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, hey. You know, speaking of bad company, I was in kind of a lull recently um, where I didn't know what game to play, so I've been playing a lot of Battlefield 1943 again. Oh, uh, yeah? It's a lot of fun. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's, it's a good game. Battlefield 1943, it's on sale this week, I think. Yeah, I think on it's on Xbox Live. Oh, that's right, it's uh, like 10 bucks this week. Yeah. Yeah, if you didn't get it the first time, I'd highly recommend uh, picking that up. Maybe the best arcade game on the 360. I think so. That or Shadow Complex, I would say. Ooh, it's Shadow Complex is so good, man. I do also like Pac-Man CE, though. Pac-Man CE was a lot of fun. So that's, that's a different different I feel like, caliber of game, I feel though. like that was the first game where I reached the limit of the controller on the Xbox, where <laughs> I just couldn't interface with it. I remember that. You had a lot like, of trouble with Pac-Man CE. <sighs> he, that little Pac-Man never went the direction you wanted him to go. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because I feel like I still have the same experience in, in Modern Warfare, too, <laughs> where it's like, for some reason, someone walks up, shoots Joel... Joel then stabbed at the air because I always mash down on that left god frickin' stick every <laughs> single frickin' time. I, I really I don't like the functionality of clicking down a left. I'm too I got too much tension. In yeah. The- <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! That's another one. They announce another another fucking Dragon Age next spring oh, as yeah, well, right? Mm-hmm. I haven't even played the first one yet. Should I go back and play that? Yeah, totally. It's like I feel like we're almost getting to the point now where it's like games are good enough where it's like, okay, if I didn't play Mass Effect 1, it's like if I play Mass Effect 2 and I like it, it's almost like, well, I'm going to go back and buy Mass Effect 1. Yeah. Like, and the fall-off isn't, in terms of, you know, graphics, and it's not that much, you know? Well, we're it's already... totally playable. What are we, six? How far into the Xbox are we? The 360? Six years? Five uh, years? Four, over, a little over four years. It launched in November of 05. So we are four years and three months in. Wow. Oh, I can look at my hoodie to tell me. <laughs> there you it go. launched November twenty first, two thousand five. There you go. You know, is there any is there any talk of a new the next generation PlayStation? Nope. Not till uh, what do they say two thousand twelve at the earliest? Yeah, they're 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 trying to get the most they can out of the current hardware. I think I read somewhere that they want a ten year cycle, which mm-hmm. I'm totally fine with, man. Because like Joel said, it's like, the Xbox three hundred and sixty and I guess the PS three 
are good enough that I don't feel any technical limitations. I don't feel any graphical limitations. I just I love the system, and I just want to keep. I just want them to keep developing games for this yeah, Xbox un- until you see the tech demos for the next guess, generation, and then you're yeah. like, holy shit, the, the stuff I'm playing looks like absolute crap. Yeah, I guess those tech demos never when's, when's never turn out. When's the to last be thing that you've you seen where it's like, wow, that that, that is just graphic graphically there, a, a next generation step? There was a demo for when like the, I feel like that happened like five six years ago when we went to the like you'd see things are like, oh my god, you know, I haven't felt that in a long is it me? I don't know. There was this demo for the PS3, before the PS3 came out, of this, like, Uncharted 2-style third-person shooter game where you were, like, in a desert and you were fighting dudes and you slid over a car. Do you remember this this trailer, Gus? Yeah. It was, like, the coolest-looking game. And I remember thinking, like, wow, that's the best-looking video game I've ever seen. It was, like, it was like playing a cutscene to the nth degree. And then they just canceled the game. I don't yeah. even remember the name of the that's, game. Uh, we, saw that, we saw that demo at E3, and that's when Steven Spielberg was sitting next to oh, us. Oh, yeah, we sat next to Steven Spielberg. But, yeah, that's the last time I felt like that. And then, you know, they just do that. I don't even they're, they're, That game may have never actually been in development. They may have just made a cool trailer to show, that, to show off the PS3. That and Final then, Fantasy VII... Like, remake in the PS3 engine was pretty cool. It was just, like, a tech demo, though. Yeah. I don't know if you yeah. ever saw that. I did see that. But, and, you know, everyone's, you know, so nostalgic for Final Fantasy VII. The, uh, the, you know, when the original Xbox got launched, they had that tech demo. I don't know if you remember it, of, like, that that uh, that girl walking alongside the robot and moving, and the robot was moving. Bill Gates did the unveiling on that. I don't remember that. There's was, like, a giant mech standing next to her. Hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll put that in the link, though. Yeah, I don't know. I do remember there being a trailer for an xbox game when the xbox was on its way out that was kind of like something void maybe not dark void but some and it was like a futuristic sci-fi like mechy kind of shooter that also looked really cool and trailery or like really cutscene-y. and then that game never came out came i think either. you're talking uh, that might be duality that you're talking about is it which was a game that got canceled yeah i'll i'll i'll, I'll put it in the link up and you can tell me whether or not that was okay. a game we'll so i'm still waiting for dungeon keeper 3 which <laughs> Probably not going to come out. <laughs> well, Tropical <laughs> 3 comes out next week, which I'm really excited about. And if Tropical 3 is coming out next week, what's to keep them from making a Dungeon Keeper 3? There you go. Because those are, those like, Tropical that, 2 and Dungeon Keeper 2 came out, like, more or less the same time. I or or that the, was the greatest game ever. I thought that was a, Dungeon Keeper was the greatest game ever. Or that game, uh, what was it called, Wetworks with the pipes? <laughs> I've been waiting for that I forever. saw a graphical. It looks awesome, dude. The water is so <laughs> The real. tech demo for Wetworks 2 was incredible. <laughs> Which is funny to me because I think I actually got the name of that game correct too, and you're still not believing me. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Gus can find it for the link dump. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I played it on my Palm phone. You know? Them. Did you really? Yeah. Oh god, like crazy. You know? Uh, I forgot. I, I should have brought this up right a second ago when we were talking about the original Xbox tech demo. You know, X- Xbox Live for the original Xbox is getting turned off April fifteenth. That's true. Wait, yeah. Wait. Finally. Say that again. The X- X- the original Xbox will no longer be able to connect to Xbox Live effective April fifteenth. Also, if you play wow. original Xbox games in your 360, those won't be able to have live functionality anymore. Halo 2? Nope. Nope. So as a result, Bungie wants everyone to get together on April 14th and play Halo 2 for the last time because it's the last time we'll be able to play on Xbox Live. I think that's a great idea. I think that'll be fun. Are you going to do it? That is yeah, a great I'm, t- I'm totally going to do that. I can't remember the last time I played um, Halo, Halo 2. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a while. If you haven't gotten all your achievements... There, there, aren't, there, aren't there aren't any achievements. Halo it's an, <laughs> it's an oh, Xbox right. One game. Well, Halo, <laughs> Halo 2 PC has them. Hey, I wonder how that's going to work. Will they turn off? No, that's that's live for Windows or is that so that's totally different? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That's different. Hmm. God, it's so weird to me. Halo Two didn't have achievements. Jesus. Yeah, it was a long time ago. <sighs> it's crazy. I don't know. <laughs> it was a it, it was uh, a bad time for humanity. Pre achievements, dark dark ages. That was the last game where I could convince myself that I didn't totally completely suck because there was no bar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were all, I played Halo Two with you one time. I remember just fucking around in the office, and you beat me like forty to two. I hated you. That was the one. That was the one. One of the very, very rare times where I'd actually played a game a lot, um, and I got lucky. But th- it was funny. It's because I, Jeff could, you know, ninety percent of the games out there he could beat me at. But it was so funny. They happened to be shooting a documentary. Oh, that's right. Office, that's like, right. How about we have you guys play in the background? <laughs> <laughs> and so somewhere there's a documentary of me. You just <laughs> destroyed me. Jeff. It was so that's funny. It <laughs> was brutal. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the thing. Like that goes to show you because it's like Jeff had been shooting Machinima in the Halo Two environment a lot, and I have been like playing it a shooting lot. Shooting in Halo Two a lot. <laughs> it's like filming and playing. Two different two different things. Yeah, two totally yeah. different things. It's true. Um I saw an article the other day that talked about the Australian censor board. Uh, has outlawed 
girls with small breasts from doing porn. Why would why? They think that uh, when women with small breasts do porn, that it's um, like fetishizing prepubescent girls. That's the and underdeveloped girls. So weirdest. The, thing. I guess the Australian classification board no longer allows women with A cups f- to be in porn. That's that's just bizarre. That wow. that country is fucking weird. Uh, let's see. It says. They ban mainstream pornography from showing women with a cup breasts, apparently on the grounds that they encourage pedophilia, and in spite of the fact that there's a normal breast size for many adult women. You know, now if we could only somehow ban male genitalia in porn, <laughs> that would be... That would be Man, good. That's, what, what, what's next with those guys? Oh, I think... What, They're already banning every video game to come out. They, they, Australia also banned pornographic depictions of female ejaculation. <laughs> 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 the censors branded it abhorrent. <laughs> Man, I, I, that, that settles it. I can't live in Australia now. Yeah. No, wow. I can't live without my female ejaculation. <laughs> <laughs> I need my sloppy pussy. <laughs> that's so gross. <laughs> oh man. But that's. Uh, I, I think I, I saw that last week, and I've been I've been dying to bring that up on the on the podcast. Did you see any movies this weekend or anything? Oh I, man, I don't, I don't think anyone can talk that. You know, <laughs> Joel's gonna it, lose I'm, it. I'm glad you asked. The other day, I watched The Invention of Lying, finally. You oh, know, that you Ricky were telling Gervais me about movie. that. Yeah, and we saw the trailers for, I guess, late last year. Did you see that? No, I'm, I'm not going to okay. see it now, because I love Ricky Gervais. Right. And it's, it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my see, life. See, this is so disappointing to me, because I haven't seen it. Jeff hasn't seen it. But to me, the premise is like, what a great premise. Oh, hilarious. When I saw that trailer, I thought, that dude's brilliant. That is a brilliant idea for a film. Yeah. yeah it's a great idea. It's, it's poorly executed. You know, Jonah Hill's in that movie. Yeah. Jonah Hill's in everything. I, I didn't know he was in it until he made his appearance. It's uh, it's not very good. It uh, I don't know. It's it's not quite what I was expecting. I guess it wasn't the lighthearted comedy I was looking for. Well, that's too bad. Well, it's like when they set down a precedent like that. Immediately, your brain goes, "Oh, they could do this, or they could do this, or they could do this, or they could do this." And then when they don't do that, yeah. Man, speaking of comedy, have you been watching Saturday Night Live lately? Yeah, I I I, I normally watch it every week. I've kind of half watched the last two weeks though. Man, I, I, for some reason they've been on lately. I, think. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. The Sigourney I, Weaver episode I wasn't too into, and uh, some of this last week with Ashton Kutcher I didn't think it was that great. But they had a couple of skits that were just. I, I, I got to disagree funny. with you. I feel like you're you're. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I feel like we have we're not running in the same like comedic circle right now for some reason. You like, think so? Some was, of the stuff you find funny, I, I just I find terrible. Like that sports talk alien thing. Oh, dude, okay, that was okay. so fun. Okay. They, they've done that skit like five times. It's always the same joke. But I've seen every episode this season and I've never seen well, it. Well, apparently you haven't seen all of them. That was, that, that was the first time I saw that alien thing. I thought it was hysterical. You yeah, know? it was now, really funny. the thing that Bernie linked with the Riley, the Riley joke, I don't get it. Well, that, bitch. That's the, the Fred Harmison saying you bitch for ten minutes. <laughs> Oh, it. like the, at the dinner table? Yeah, that was not funny. That was terrible. Not funny. But no, like this last week they had uh, Kristen Wiig and Fred Armistead do that that uh, yeah. co- that singing duo that show up on the news. Oh, they've and done that unprepared. Be- they've done that. Yeah, before I've seen too. them do that a couple times. But this week, this last week, it was. Did you see it? Yeah, well, it well, was so fucking funny. Fred Armistead just completely and totally cracked Kristen Wiig up. She couldn't continue, and they both had to put their heads down. They were laughing so hard. I've never seen anybody bail on a I, joke. That's actually when I turned SNL off, because they, they showed Keenan Thompson doing that Jean K. Jean, which I hate, and, oh, then, and yeah. then those two came out, and I was like, that's it. I'm not watching anymore. I, I turned away at that they're, point. They're, that was one of the funniest things I've, I've seen on Saturday Live in a long, long, long time. And right after that, the, also that show, I think that maybe you and I are different in that I like really out there, bizarre comedy. Mm-hmm. And this show, the, Saturday Night Live is getting really weird. Like the Burn Notice skit, you probably didn't see that. Because you turned that was right. Yeah, that's the when news. I turned off. Yeah. Like that was just so weird, and it was so funny because it was just such a bizarre premise. They had a, I don't know if you saw it. Did you see it, Joel? They had a, you know that TV show Burn Burn, Burn Notice, Notice yeah. on USA Channel. Only seen the commercials. Yeah, nobody knows what it's about, right? I couldn't <laughs> tell you what it's about. So they had a game show called What Is Burn Notice, and all the contestants try to come up with like anything <laughs> to describe Burn Notice. They watch the, they watch a, like promos, and they're like, "Tell me one thing about the show from this promo," and nobody can do it. It's very, very, very funny. That's kind of funny. Great concept. Yeah, and then right after that, they had uh, Andy Samberg's Mitt Romney apology to Sarah Palin. Oh, no, that was uh, Emmanuel Rahm. Emmanuel Rahm, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, Rahm Emanuel. Emanuel. Rahm Emanuel. Sorry. (laughs) God damn it. And uh, old white dudes. I was closer than you were. (laughs) Shut up. You were. And uh, and that was just, like, also very, 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 very funny. I don't know. Those two skits alone made the whole episode. Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, it sounds like a great... I need to get more in. They just they do really weird stuff. Like the sports alien thing. Like, I don't know why Gus doesn't like it. That's such it's, a weird premise. It's because they it's show so it funny. over and over. And I really hate Keenan Thompson. I just, anytime he's on the screen, it's just like nails on a chalkboard to me. He's one of the funniest people on the show. No. I love it's, him. It sounds like no, he's I, always I, trying to do a bad funny. Bill Cosby See, impression I'm, ri- of me. I'm right in between you guys. See, because I thought the skit was hysterical. That guy not as funny as probably someone else could have. No. Been. I don't know. But I think he's funny. I he's like him. Okay, yeah. I don't know. He's, he's the, really the alien guy to me was hysterical. He's really grown on me. I think yeah. this might be one of the better casts they've ever had. Actually, really, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, everybody on that show is. I don't want to sound like I'm dumping on the show constantly. I, I think they're all right. I dislike Fred Armistead and almost everything he does. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He's the only one. I like everybody else on the show. Mm. My wife always tells me I look like Fred Armisen. That's not cool. <laughs> I know. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> I will say that. Though. And then she's like, no, no. I think he's hot though. And I'm like, what? <laughs> That dude has an. Um, that dude's like a chameleon, though. He can look like any like, ethnicity in like two seconds. You're like, I don't what? know how he does it. You're like, what? <laughs> what was that story? I can't remember if it was a Luke comic or someone had told me this or Jeff told me this. Where Gus went to a bar and some oh, dude was staring. Gus and I. Gus and I were in San Jose at the Cinnabar. Oh yeah. <laughs> some dude was staring at Gus and staring at Gus and staring at Gus and staring at Gus. And finally, <laughs> at the end of the night, he comes up to Gus and he's like, "What do you say?" He goes. Well, I, I, I was trying to go to the bathroom. Yeah. He was playing pool, and he was blocking the way. And I walk up to him. And I go, "Excuse me, I'm trying to get to the and bathroom." And the guy goes, "Hold on a second, hold on a second. I get the, I, I can do this every time. Half black, half Chinese." <laughs> no, he, he goes, "Half black, half Korean, half Korean." And literally. I was like, "Nope, <laughs> can I go to the bathroom now?" But you like, know, I'm never wrong. I thought, I thought you were Japanese for the first year. But, I, I thought he was Samoan when I met him. You know what's Samoan. funny about that is the last time I went to New Zealand, uh, one night my wife Nico and I all went out to this um, bar that was down the street from where we were staying in Auckland. And uh, we walk in, and they had it was like karaoke night at the bar or something. It's like a bunch of regulars. They're all going up and singing. And there was this one, like, real drunk Maori dude who was, like, at, standing at the bar next to me. And um, he turns to me and goes, uh, what are you, Mexican or something? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? How did you? I was like, how did you know? He goes, uh, I can always tell. He's the only dude He's on the, the planet. the only dude who's ever gotten it right. <laughs> always tell. That guy's a genius. Hey, so uh, favorite Super Bowl commercial? Uh, Betty White. Uh, probably the Betty White one. I didn't see the Betty White one. That's funny. It's the Snickers commercial. <laughs> it's, it's, and Betty Plus White and Abe Pagoda. Pagoda. <laughs> I love anything with Abe Pagoda. Yeah. You God, gotta love Abe Pagoda. I'm proud that he's still alive. Go yeah. Abe. After that commercial, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Joel? What was your favorite? I saw, I, I went back and like, I didn't, I tuned in like the third quarter of the Super Bowl, so I missed a lot of commercials, went on the internet and just sort of looked through some of them and there was a career builder commercial oh yeah right i thought that was which, which one was that i mean the, the one it. where it's like casual friday's gone too far and like people are showing up like no no no. it's the one where oh. it's uh you know how you know you hate your job oh you know and i think it's probably like i've been doing this too long because it was an ad where it's, they take like six shots and just repeat them again and oh, again that was, that was from over. last year god damn see how out of it it's i the am the one where they punch a koala and the woman's screaming in the car oh, i'm a year yeah. behind that was I'm last that was last behind. year's super bowl commercial that's why i get to looking on the internet for super bowl commercials. <laughs> you, know, you know what i think is funny um, did you notice that in the megan fox motorola commercial they used a hand double did they really yeah no i didn't notice because megan fox has those big oh she has yeah thumbs. she has like yeah and then on the close-up when she's using the phone it's obviously like a hand model <laughs> she's got tarred thumbs I yeah, forgot about that. using the phone instead of her uh yeah I, I, overall i'd have to say it was a pretty weak year for super bowl commercials yeah Advertisers need to try a little harder. I agree. I thought that one, most of the Doritos commercials were I thought were were just atrocious. Oh, but yeah. But the one in the, bad. the, one in the gym like, I thought was good. The one in the funny. gym was all right. Was that like yeah. a contest where, pe- yeah. where people could. Yeah. Okay, well, that explains it. Yeah. But yeah, the one in the gym I thought was pretty funny. Oh, the, the uh, Letterman commercial was pretty good. It was okay. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't much to it. It was just, it was cool in the sense that it was interesting that they were able to put those three people together in a room. Yeah. Let, let's not get into a detailed discussion about late night. Right. And let's just. And, Apparently, I need to go back and listen to that podcast because <laughs> I guess that was a really. Good it almost episode. it almost ended the podcast. <laughs> People, yeah, uh, Bernie and I both were very uh, felt very passionately about the late night. Wars. I kept trying. I kept trying to drive the topic somewhere else, and I just kept getting dragged back in. Yeah, I did my best. Well, see, that's the thing. Like, I'm not even you know following most of this stuff, you know. But it's to me that they get get Letterman and Leno on the same couch. With yeah, Oprah. with that's Oprah funny. between them. That's funny. Yeah, it was, how it was they funny get Leno to agree to that? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's a it's a win win for everybody involved, right? Yeah, yeah. He's probably so, just trying to rehabilitate absolutely. his image, and yeah. So why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. You know, um, you know how at airports now they're starting to install like these full body scanners, and there's like all this uh, outrage about it. People are scared mm-hmm. that you know they'll be able to save naked pictures of you because yeah. these scanners can see through your clothes and see all your junk and stuff. Save naked pictures. <laughs> have, have, has the public seen itself? 
<laughs> well, you know, and and the the, the security side, you know, the airports always say that these uh, these machines don't save images. They just display them, and then immediately they're they're purged. And you're, you know, the person looking at the images isn't even in the same room as you. Well, I read a story that I guess some Bollywood superstar went through one of those full body scanning machines in London, and then like right after he went through, people were bringing up pictures, naked pictures of himself from the machine, just so he could autograph. How uh, mm-hmm. how, how how do you how's awesome. his, how his junk? That's awesome. Uh, I don't know. I, there was no the picture, picture in the story. Like, what's his name? Shah Rukh Khan. I guess he was on some British television show Friday night with Johnson what? Ro- Jonathan Ross, <laughs> and he said that he went through security and right after. He, what did he say? Uh, blah blah blah. Something happens. He said, "I was a little scared. Something happens inside the scans, and I came out. Then I saw these girls. They had these printouts. I looked at them. I thought there were some forms I had to fill. I said, give them to me." And you could see everything inside. So if I autographed for them. If I was that dude, I would have like dr- I would have extended my penis with a sharpie and signed that. <laughs> <laughs> you would too. I mean, it'd be awesome. Fuck it, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> so I can't believe you know after all this talk about how it's deleted right away that this dude goes through and they're, they're, they have fucking printouts when he comes through security. How's I mean, that and possible? also that's how slow security is. And they're handing like, them out to people. Like, like he went through and they had time to like print out naked pictures of him so that while he was still there he could uh, he could autograph them. Yeah, that's really. And the funny the funny part of the story that they don't tell you is the guy after him was actually carrying a bomb. <laughs> no, nobody he noticed. He got all the way through and no pronounced of that. Everybody was looking at Bollycock. <laughs> <laughs> Bollywood? Yeah. Oh. Hey-oh! Like penis wood. I got gotcha. you. Okay, good. Making sure. Not like, you know, lumber wood. Right, right. That'd be, that'd be lame. No one wants to see that. No. Well, you know, I think it's odd that we haven't, you know, it's been a couple of weeks and we haven't talked about at all about the Oscar nominations. Uh, I mean, I, I'm having trouble being excited about the Oscars this year. Really? Sort of, sort of like, I don't, I'm not down with that 10 fucking it's, 10 films for Best Picture. It's sort of like the NHL playoffs where they let almost everybody into the playoffs. Yeah, right? It's like, or, or the NBA too. It's like you've got, what, like a, if you make a film that makes over $20 million, you've got like a 40% chance that it's going to be no- nominated for Best Picture? I guess so. That's like, I don't know. It's funny too because like from a marketing standpoint, this is something that almost had to, to happen to like generate more cash flow for movies. <laughs> so, what? We were, we were nominated. Yeah, now we can re-release. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, what, uh, I, I, but something that we did talk about before the nominations came out is I'm surprised to see Up got nominated for Best Picture. I'm happy that it got nominated. Because I, you know, I, I was very adamant that it was impossible, it wouldn't happen, and I'm glad to see that I was proven wrong. Uh, of all the Pixar movies, do you think, where does Up stand? In best. All really? I, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't. Really? What do you think the best Pixar movie is? Uh, the one in space. <laughs> I think Wally. <laughs> I think Wally, Wally is better than Up, but I think... I think The Incredibles might be my favorite. Wall- Wally, I can say because I-, I watch all those movies over and over again with my kid. Wally does not hold up to subsequent viewings very well. Really? Yeah, it's a little slow and a little boring, honestly, and it doesn't pick up really until like the last twenty minutes. And the thing about the thing about Up is I had hands down the most emotional response to that movie out of all of them. Yeah, well, Up reminds you every ten minutes that you need to be sad. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, they just do a really good job with that. Uh, it's it's just a fun it's a cool fun point yeah. of film. I like Incredibles a lot. The Incredibles is a lot of fun. Like to me, like Wally was a movie where it's like I think it had like two lines of written dialogue. Yeah, and so like for some reason that made it more universal. Yeah. So also, also, but, I, I liked Wally more. I, I, I've seen it a couple times. I've seen a few subsequent viewings, and I, I still think I think I still think I like it more than Up. I'm down with the message and everything, but it also just was a little heavy handed. I thought with the you're right, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you're yeah, you're right about that for sure. I just the 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 up. I felt like I was getting stabbed in the kidney. With great the rusty screwdriver. Great or? film though. You know, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I loved Wally. I thought it was awesome. I saw it in the theater twice. No, no. Well, I mean, we're, we're we're like arguing like which is better, porterhouse or filet mignon? You yeah, know? It's, absolutely. It's, it's, right. a, it's a great argument to be having. It's true. What what? Uh, who do you think should win? Best picture. Yeah, Avatar. So the, so the nominees. I'm sure think, everyone knows it's Avatar, The Blind Side, District Nine, An Education, The Hurt Locker, Inglorious Bastards, Precious, A Serious Man, Up and Up in the Air. I haven't seen Hurt Locker yet, and I hear it's tremendous. But come on, dude, Avatar is the highest grossing film domestic and worldwide of all time, and it did it in eight weeks. I think that Avatar is basically the Wizard of Oz. Sure. It's the same thing. It's like, oh, it's in color, exciting. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know that that make, makes it the best. Oh, I, I, I liked it a lot. I thought it was great. I thought. Technically, it was tremendous. I mean, there's no, there's no arguing that. But I really like the, like I like the performance of what's her face, Zoe Saldana, so much. Why, she, why can't our Saldana be that, ta- God, that talented? Can't. She did a great, <laughs> or that did, hot. She's the only hot talented Saldana. She did apparently. a fantastic job. She, she did really a fantastic did. job. 
God love And the it. people that animated that character did a, a tremendous yeah. job. Yeah, they did. I, they think, were, um, I think I have The Hurt Locker and Precious coming to me on Netflix tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah. Movie party at Gus's? No, no. <laughs> I'm no. going to walk over. I, I guess you told me I can show up at your house uninvited whenever I want to. That's true. So I'm going to do it tomorrow night with some popcorn and a couple of beers. No, don't bring... We, we have... We, popcorn's a big deal at our house. Don't okay. bring popcorn. I won't bring we are, it. We are... We we have the popcorn situation covered. <laughs> you know I can't eat popcorn anyway. So oh that's shit, that sucks. Matter. We 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 are popcorn scientists at the Sorolla House. What's your what's the the uh, the brand du jour? Um, I, I can't give any of my secrets away. No, no. All right. It's it, we got we got a machine. We got like powders and mixtures. I and will say the last time I was I had popcorn at your house it was Jiffy Pop on the oven. Right. We've 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 come a long way since then. Okay. Fair we enough. Are. We are experts. Not that there's anything wrong with Jiffy Pop. We have a dedicated popcorn machine. Okay, good. That sounds we're exciting. We're dedicated. serious. That's not even a dedicated <laughs> popcorn machine. Yes. We're, nice. We're very serious. How about one tip for the fans at home? Um, use an air popper. Okay. It's the way to go. There Microwave popcorn? It's crappy. Hmm. Well, come on. Every, doesn't everybody already know that? <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's what everyone goes for. And, <laughs> and honestly, the air popper... It, it it doesn't cost very much, and it's just as fast as a fucking microwave, if not faster. And it tastes a million times better. Microwave popcorn was one of those things that just never quite worked. I don't know. It's convenient, I guess. But then, like, you pop a bunch of popcorn in your microwave, and then your microwave always smells like generic popcorn butter. And it's weird. Like, like that, it becomes yellow. I don't know. It, it like, fucks with like, your microwave. Like, hit, hitting that sweet spot in the popcorn bag where you don't overburn mm-hmm. the popcorn or... Underdo it, and then you have like too many seeds in there. I like trying to get in there where you ride that mania. You, I think it's literally like three nanoseconds. My 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 microwave has a popcorn button, and it cooks popcorn perfectly every time mm. by hitting the popcorn button. What the fuck? I, yeah, I don't so, even own a microwave. It might be time to upgrade face. the microwave. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I get technology. So. I, it does vary from microwave to microwave. There's no doubt it about that. It definitely does. Yeah, the no, popcorn it, button does help. We have the popcorn button on the microwave here in the office. Mm-hmm. We also have a, a barcode scanner on the microwave. Boy, in the that office. didn't turn out to be that, worth a damn thing. No, that didn't. <laughs> that was a cool idea that fell flat. I guess the theory was you could scan your food and it would know how to cook it, or you could like build a database in it of like foods and cook times and stuff. And turns powers. out that's a lot of work. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a manual <laughs> process. It, our microwave doesn't connect to the internet and download that information. No. Now, if they could connect the microwave to the internet, then we might be talking. I'll tell you, or if you didn't have to scan it, you just, like, there was an internal scanner, and you just stick whatever it is in, and it mm. sees the barcode, so you don't have to fucking pull out the little barcode pen. Yeah, but, I mean, how, how many things there do you put in, you the, in the microwave with, still in the box, with the barcode, though? That's true. You have to, have to come up with some sort of a system. Can you imagine, like, buying a steak, and on the steak, it's got, like, some sort of tattoo barcode on the surface? Joel, of I could not imagine buying a steak and sticking it in a microwave. Yeah, who in the world what would the microwave a steak? What wrong with you? I am the ultimate that's the, bachelor. That's the most horrible thing I've there's ever heard nothing, in my There's life. nothing you can't stick in a microwave. You can, bro- <laughs> you can broil a steak in your oven in, like, seven minutes. Broiling's uh, awesome. Yeah. Every time I try and cook, I I, to, it's bad. I started to explain that to my wife the other day. She was, I was asking what she wanted to do for Valentine's Day. We decided not to go out and you know fight the crowds and stuff. So I told her I'd cook like a f- special dinner for her and Mill. And uh, I asked her what she wanted. She said that she wanted steak maybe, but that it'd be too cold to grill. And I was like, well, why don't you broil it? And she gave me the weirdest look like, why would you broil a steak? I was trying to explain to her, every steak you eat at every restaurant is broiled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For the most, well, like 99% of the time. Mm-hmm. That's any, how most steaks good are cooked. It's true. Yeah. Well, what's the difference between baking and broiling, right? Like, and, and to me, since I don't know a damn thing about cooking... A hundred degrees me, and where you put it on the rack. No, no, no. Like, te- and and I could, and I could, I could be where wrong. the heat comes from. Yeah. That's right. It's where the heat comes from. It's like, well, if it's heated from the top, if it's heated from the bottom, it's baking and it's heated. I can't remember now. Yeah. But if it's, or if it's both, that, that's it. It's broil, top and bottom. Broil is both. Yeah. yeah. Broil is both. Baking is what? Just over Bottom. Bottom. Just bottom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do we need two terms? Or <laughs> I thought it was a lot more complicated than that. It's so much no, no, no. and, 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 with- and broiling is a lot more high temperature. It's the heat's a lot more intense. And typically, you put what you're broiling a lot closer to the heat. Like baking, Absolutely. you you like put it in the center and that's it. Broiling, you want to get it like if you're broiling a steak, you want to get it like one to one and a half inches away from your heat the, source. The, at the lowest top. rack or at the top, yeah. And uh, you uh, and you want to cook it on the don't, highest don't. heat possible. Steak I, is a big I, deal at the Sorolla House too. No, yeah, don't get no, me no, started. Wait, I've got a no, system. No, I'm, I'm, it's God bless. It you. needs to be a minimum of 500 be. degrees. It should be a big deal. It should be. It's such a big deal to me. I'm scared to even even <laughs> try. You know, I, it's yeah. God, we should start our own. We, just, we start a food, food podcast, right? I'll talk about some food. Fuck it, dude. I'll talk about some food. Like for instance. I became a fan of Indian food last week. How, that, could, you know, how ama- could you not be a fan of Indian food? Oh, that's amazing to me because we took so many trips making commercials, and anytime Indian food came up, Jeff just wouldn't eat. 
Yeah. I, I'd I don't be like try some of this, try some of that. Nope, oh, it's nope, good. Nope. It's great. I don't stuff. like. I don't, Joel. I don't like anything. <laughs> I, and I'm trying so hard to to break out of that because I'm I've really gotten into cooking, and uh, it's hard to cook if you don't like seafood. If you only like Mexican food, it's really. I mean, <laughs> I can only make enchiladas so many times. Right? I can only grill steaks so often. So I've been trying to expand my palate. And Griffin and I went to this. Uh, I, we've probably talked about this before, but Austin has this thing where all the new restaurants are in trailers. And they're just oh, in parking yeah. lots or in fields or whatever. It sounds sure. kind of weird. Well, it's totally weird. Griffin and I found an Indian restaurant called Garage Mahal, <laughs> and it's in somebody's backyard. And all the out- all the seating is outdoor, and they cook it in a trailer. And it's like dining like service, sounds like a beer it's, commercial. It's yeah, it, it kind of does. And it's in also this place called the Austin Bicycle Museum. And so there's all these crazy bicycles around you. Like there's this one uh, bicycle that's a hundred feet long. It's a big snake. That's crazy. Like, 30 seats in it, like all this nuts of stuff. And you just sit outside on picnic tables and eat like Indian food out of this trailer. But it is so fucking tremendous. Let's, let's go. Yeah, man, I'm down. They open at 5 o'clock every day. It's there's, on Rainy Street. There's this uh, Korean restaurant you should come to with me one day up by uh, the Galaxy Cinema. It's real good. Is there any food type that you don't like? Is it trailer food? Because I only eat trailer food. <laughs> no, it's not trailer food. It's a, it's a sit-down <laughs> is there any, restaurant. Is there any food type you don't like? I don't like seafood. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying really hard to break out of that. But seafood's just fucking disgusting. I, I can't eat it. God, it's the worst. I'm, surra- I'm surrounded by people who don't like seafood. Yeah. Jack doesn't like seafood. No one likes seafood. It's hard, too, because, like, for me, because I just bought this really expensive cookbook. Suppose it was the Epicurious said it was the cookbook of the year for last year. And uh, I get it home, and I go to the entrees. One entree that's not seafood. Well, that's, a, that's, not, a good, other that's not a good entree cookbook, is then. It's not, they not, say it's not, it is. That's not good diversity. That's how I fucked it's up. It's all seafood? Had my Nigerian cornbread in there, and I fucking destroyed that. Nigerian cornbread. That was horrible. That was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm so I think the more you get did, into did it cooking, ask you for money to like free up yeah, free more money from a bank. <laughs> really no, but I had to go. Insert joke here. I had to go all the way to the other side of town to an Indian grocery store to buy these seeds called nigella because it called for them. It took me about two hours to track these seeds down. I went to like four grocery stores. I finally found them in this little Indian grocery store. Put all this work into it, and it was it just it was a mess. It was what, disgusting. It, what, do you remember? Where'd you, find, where'd you end up finding it? MGM is what it's called, I think. I don't even know where that is. It's on Burnett, um, like kind of up in Furniture Row area. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's just in a strip mall next to a shoe store, and it's just like tiny little Indian grocery store. It's actually really cool. Hmm. And it was, it was a cool experience. I saw some crazy stuff in that store. It's called M- MGM, I think is what it's called. Yeah. You should look it up. I think my, my wife, uh, they have a little lunch counter there, too, as well. Hmm. Well, it's no Garage Mahal, though. No, no, no. I don't think so. Garage Mahal is fantastic. You got to check it out. Man, we're, we're, this, this might be like the most food discussion we've ever had in a podcast. I had this thing <laughs> at Garage Mahal. I think it's called Paneka or Paneka. Mm-hmm. It's an appetizer. I, I apologize if I'm pronouncing it wrong or saying the wrong thing. But it's like a bunch of vegetables smashed together and then deep fried. Oh, pff, come so on. So it's like a, like a awesome. vegetable, deep fried vegetable cookie, almost. Probably that, one of the ten best things I've ever put in my mouth. That sounds awesome. It, it was awesome. so good. Matt and I went to go get uh, Ethiopian food at one time when we were in LA, and they had this thing called I know, right? But they had there's this thing that's like it's in between rice and pasta. It's some weird substance, and it's mm-hmm. like a they bring it to you. It's like an ace bandage, and you unroll it and you stick your freaking food in. You eat that damn thing, and it's awesome. Did you eat it with your hands? You're supposed to eat Ethiopian food with your hands. I totally You know, there's an Ethiopian place right over there, close to where we live, Jeff, and I always want to eat there. I just never remember to go there. I've been meaning, it's called Astor's Ethiopian, Mm -hmm. and I've been meaning to go there for a while because I have heard so many good things about that place from so many people. Everybody seems to love it. Yep. And Ethiopian food's supposed to be super spicy, too, which actually uh, I uh, I love. But it's like, when I was in L.A., like... All, all the food there was great except for Tex-Mex. They could not get Tex-Mex right. California Mexican food is the worst. It's, it's right. Now that I'm in Austin, the Tex-Mex food here is awesome. The burgers are awesome. Steaks are awesome. I feel like I can't find, like, any Asian food that's really hitting it yeah. here. I mean, it's just uh, – or, like, you know, I'm not sure that, like, when you stray too far here in Austin, it just doesn't – I'm not sure. Yeah, the Asian food is definitely lacking here. But that Korean place, uh, it's called Chosun Galbi. It's up there by Highland Mall. It's real good. What's the best Chinese food in Austin? Uh, there's not really very much good Chinese food. I might have to say Sun, Sun Hing, Hing. Yeah. Um, which is out there on the drag, like across from Dirty Martins. And they deliver to us. So they deliver to you too as well. Yeah, yeah. Sun Hing's good. You should check that out. I can't really think of a decent place other than Sun Hing. The Chinatown downtown's all right. Yeah, it's okay. Well, it's super compa- Comparatively to everything else. Everything else sucks here. Yeah. Yeah, comparatively it's good. I think that's probably just Texas as a whole, right? I don't know. Houston has a lot of good Chinese food. Oh, does it really? Yeah. I've never. I've had some Asian food there a couple times that I wasn't too keen on. 
All right. Well, should we wrap up our food podcast? We yeah. Wrap up let's our, uh, maybe we should wrap up a burger and go and eat next that. Next week, we should instead of music, we should start with a recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, maybe we'll do that. We'll, we'll start planning like subliminal recipes that like uh, very quietly. Someone into please the incorporate a recipe into music. What a uh, – hey, Gus, what do you uh, what do you want to eat for lunch today? What do you feel like? I don't know. Something fast. I got to edit the podcast and put it out today. Yeah, I got a lot of Bioshock work to do too. All right. Well, let's go get to it. All right. All right. Thanks and for listening. Bye, guys.